People come to us from all over the world wanting help, wanting an opinion, and, and I have to say first it's an amazing privilege to have people come to me to want my opinion, and I'm proud of the care that my team renders. It's a feeling that is unmatched, being able to, to help uh, answer people's questions, help their problem, and if not help the problem, we assure them that we are intensely interested, devoted our lives to trying to help people with neuromuscular disease. Hi, Pat. Nice to meet you. I'm Maureen, I'm one of the occupational therapists. Changed since the diagnosis has been a lot. I mean, I no longer work. I no longer take care of myself. Uh, I always need help. I need a person to help me get dressed, feed me. There always needs to be someone there to really take care of me. It's brought around a lot of difficulty, but it's brought around a lot of excitement. We're excited to fight the disease. The importance of mental health and attitude can't be underestimated at all. It's, 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 it's one of the most powerful tools that any of our patients can have, although it's far easier said than done. And uh, some people do it through activism, other people do it through raising awareness. Pat Quinn, for instance, has done more than uh, anyone that I can think of to raise awareness, to, to, to make the plight of a person and their family with ALS more visible. And in fact, Pat was one of the originators of the Ice Bucket Challenge. One, two, three. I have a great support system. Uh, starts with my family, my wife, and it extends all the way to here. I mean, I don't have a problem coming to clinic because I know Dr. Lang's here and his whole team is on my side, so I feel good about that. The most important thing that we need to do to keep our, our momentum started, in fact, by the Ice Bucket Challenge and, and hopefully will continue is to raise awareness of patients with neuro neurological, neurodegenerative disease, and especially ALS. Dr. Lang had uh, asked me to give a presentation here. And so I began to look back into the family history and uh, it, I began to assemble the names, the people. The Beaton side seems to have, as of my dad's generation, uh, a predisposition for familial ALS. Uh, I found that one, two, the three uncles had ALS, uh, that in my generation, I, and uh, my cousin Patty in Montana uh, had ALS. Familial ALS occurs in about 10% of all the patients with ALS. It is particularly interesting to us clinical investigators. Its interest is based predominantly because we know the cause. We know that when someone has a mutation in a given gene that that person will develop ALS. So there we have the target. And that has prompted us to be able to, to, to do aggressive clinical trials trying to lower that, that target molecule. The care that is given here, the, uh, the treatment itself. I mean, I remember when Dr. Lang had told me, uh, Pat, you have ALS. And he said, well, but the, the, the good part of that, if there can be a good part of it, is that we have a molecule that can help you. Pat is one of those people who participates because he had a, a familial uh, disorder. He was given the medicine. Rigorous clinical routine was demanded of him, so he had to come often, had to get spinal taps, was, uh, but it was a very well thought out um, uh, clinical protocol. And this medicine was, truly, it was designed to try to lower that toxic molecule. Whether or not it worked or not is unclear, but what is different with Pat is, is that almost every relative with this disease in his family died within three years. And he is, as you can see, doing quite well. The individual who has ALS can do a lot and enjoy a lot of life. I know my wife, when, when uh, she, she took us to, to Europe last year, and the work that she had to go through to um, push me over the, the, the cobblestones of all those cities over there and to, to uh, suggest we do it again next Christmas, <laughs> that, that's something. Uh, so you, you really, you owe it to yourself and you owe it to your caretaker to, to have the, a happy disposition because uh, then you can, you can, in a sense, I think you can help yourself out. It's very important to come to a, to a center like HSS to be cared for by people who have such experience tealing, uh, treating patients with diseases that uh, to many physicians are very rare. What we do is we bring 
decades of experience in treating people with all types of neuromuscular disease, but especially patients with ALS. There's nothing that we haven't seen. And, and because of that, I think it makes us who we are. So in Brett's case, we were able to take someone who really was a budding um, surgeon, uh, when I saw him, was, was una unable to walk without uh, stumbling and was deteriorating. Well, I, I mean, I was working, you know, 80 hours a week per law as a surgery resident. So, I mean, I was probably as active as you could physically be. At the time that I met him, I was close to probably my weakest and my worst condition. When he came to see us, after a thorough diagnostic evaluation, thorough evaluation of what we thought was going on, combined an aggressive therapeutic protocol that uh, through experience and reassurance, nothing happens quickly, but we were able to reassure him that it would get better, give us some time. And, and in fact, over time, it, it did. I've just stuck with the program and I've consistently you know, just made remarkable improvements beyond what I ever expected to make. Before getting sick, I was an avid drummer since I was uh, 13. I had told Dr. Lang, you know, for me, getting better is going to involve me being able to regain the ability to play drums because that's one of my passions in life. So it was a really big step when I was able to not only start playing drums again, but I was able to get together with some other friends and we played a couple shows around the city. And uh, you know, I've actually had a great time. It's been kind of a resurgence. But just as a person with this disease, that's a relatively rare disease. Um, not many people have my disease. There's not many research studies that have been done. When Dr. Lang came with me to me with the opportunity to be involved with this research project, I mean, I signed myself up right away because what's more important than me getting better is making sure the next people to get sick, maybe the next generation won't get as sick, maybe you can eliminate the disease or find a, a cure. Well, our research project puts us at the, the leading edge of being able to treat patients who have uh, very complex diseases and be able to modify aggressive and innovative therapies and combine them with new therapeutic advances. I still would encourage anyone to try and find research and get involved because you're only helping the future and it's the best thing you can do and give back for all the care that you've received. He now can travel the world and, and be independent simply because of some of the new therapeutic um, avenues that we've introduced into his life and he's been willing to participate in the trials and I think has been beneficial for both him and other people with that disease. Related to that, the kind of the best part of being sick is that it was in the hospital when I was first hospitalized. I met my now wife and we were able to get married. It wasn't until I started making improvements, you know, that I kind of felt like I was open to having a relationship with someone and now it's turned in, you know, now we just recently got married, came back from our honeymoon, we went all over Japan. It, things I could have never dreamed I was able to do before, so it's really been amazing. <laughs>